We're recording this to a click. <laughs> Everybody makes that joke. Every really? single person. Oh, Every single person. Fuck? Because it's just it's just recording software, so it just has a click track to count mm. off when it's gonna start. So it's always just a one hundred and twenty beat per minute click. Yeah. And <laughs> but every single like like I was literally I had Keely and Nav over yesterday. What the same thing. What are we recording this to a click? What they would we, say that. What are we recording this to a click? <laughs> every time. Because Ableton just counts you in, no matter what. Mm. I mean, you can turn it off. I, I just never remember. I hit record, and then it clicks, and then I go, oh, somebody's going to make the joke. And they go, <laughs> oh, are we recording the, uh, this to a click? Sweet. So, yeah, that's it's just an Aerodonis podcast. <laughs> <laughs> 120 BPM 120 every BPM time. <laughs> coming straight at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Chris Clute and Victoria Graf. What's up? Hello. Which Hi. one of you is Chris? Uh me. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes that makes you Victoria, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm cool. Victoria. How are you this morning? Pretty it, good. We're doing this just slightly earlier than I normally do them, so I apologize if I'm not as like, like I like if we had, if another hour and I'd be like, bushy tailed, you know, but I'm not a morning person, guys. <laughs> Me neither, man. I've been no. st- I stayed up till like six a.m. the other day. I'm just being stupid. Yeah, <laughs> but it's okay for you guys. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. Um, so what's uh what's up? You know, I'm trying to think. Yeah. <laughs> you have so much to say. Yeah, yeah. I was just... gonna say you were you burned out all all your talking no, before no. this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I can get back on. So you guys, I'm you guys had a busy about. weekend. What you do this weekend? Oh man. Um, okay, so I'm trying to think. Start on Friday. Sure. On Friday, we came here. We celebrated your birthday. Oh yeah, that's right. I still got some Blizzard cake left over after. Oh, you know, sick. It's a little early, but what's your Blizzard flavor? Oh. Go to. I, I order blizzards a lot. Yeah. Uh, I've spent Same. since the start of the pandemic. <laughs> I think I've spent probably well into the th- like thousand of dollars probably on Uber Eats and, and blizzards. Okay. Yeah. Well, because it was it was this thing where like my roommates were we like I, we'd all just moved in together. Like I moved in to this house in like late February 2020, and uh, and I, with a bunch of people like I. I kind of know, but don't really know. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, guess what? Stay inside. Like, <laughs> and, don't I'm like and I'm like, I hope these people are cool. And then <laughs> it turned out that, you know, we're all, we're all, we're all a family now. But the, uh, uh, but it was like, we all, and then we all got laid off from our jobs and it was all of us in the house. And it was like, you know, we're signing up for like Serb. And then it was like, hey, I got my Serb money one day. And then I was just like, I'm I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy blizzards on Uber Eats for everybody in the house. Round of blizzards on me because I got my Serb check. Nice. And then, uh, and then I was and then I as a joke was like, and I expect you all to do the same. And then and then like probably once a week for like a few months we we ordered blizzards on oh, on Uber Eats, and then uh, and it we got sick of them for a while, and then after like you know three four months went by, we were like we yeah. got back on the train again, and it was. It was a huge to do, but we went through a lot of flavors, and I kept coming back to Royal Oreo. Oh, that's the one with the chocolate. Fudge yeah, Oreo, that's right? that's Oreo, but with yeah, like a column of fudge. I'm down, gonna try one of those ones down the center. Yeah, yeah, nice solid cylinder. Yeah, and it's the closest to a, a an Oreo Blizzard cake. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I save that fudge in the cakes. Too. Yeah, 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 and that's my favorite thing in the world, which is nice. yes. If y'all had stuck around at the party instead of leaving to go be social somewhere else. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, if Chris had known there was blizzard, he probably would have just gone to the concert late. <laughs> you have no idea. This guy. We didn't like... order it till like one in the morning. It was oh, like okay. there was like there was like four people left, <laughs> and then. Uh, Chris is a blizzard fanatic. Yeah, yeah. So what's your flavor then, Chris? Uh oh man! For the longest time, I was cotton candy. Because it's seasonal. What are you, six? It's only <laughs> yeah. it's only yes. four months of the year, and you got to get it while it's there. Right. And I realized through being an adult and having teeth. Yeah. 
<laughs> that is really not good for your teeth. And, no. Yeah, especially that one. Yeah, 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 that one, you're chewing it forever. Oh, it sucks. Yeah. But it tastes so good. Yeah. But we recently discovered, we. I don't know how I didn't know this, but that there's extra large. I've been getting larges all my life. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but hear us out. Okay, you buy the extra large, you don't eat it all in one go, you put it in the freezer. Yeah. It's just like you buying, like, a, p- a pint of ice cream, but instead you buy an extra large blizzard, and then you keep it in your freezer. And then you, you know, have a little bit, and put it back. And I get one for Victoria all the time. Right. But... It ends up just being mine. Okay, one time he bought two McFlurries, right? I open the freezer, I see two McFlurries. They're almost all gone. I'm like, wow, like you you bought us McFlurries and then you ate them both. And he was like, I didn't buy one for you. I bought two for me. <laughs> and I don't know if I, what, what I was more offended by. I was like, you didn't even buy me one. <laughs> he doesn't owe you happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Except whenever I was somewhere, you're, spo- you're I supposed, was to <laughs> you're supposed to be happy together. You're supposed to be happy together. I was like, oh. yeah. Don't you want me to be happy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, also the other day, like this is just. I feel like I'm now I'm realizing how many of our not that our fights. Is this are, where your relationship comes unraveled? Is this what <laughs> he <laughs> bought hey, two McFlurries? AJ, <laughs> there I am, yeah. just like having a great night, just like happy Vic, just you know having a great time. Okay. Chris comes over and he's like, hey. Are you in a good mood? (laughs) And I was like, why? That's never good. And he's like, I ate the rest of your blizzard. (laughs) And I walked away and I was like, why would you do that to me? I was like, I was in such a good mood. (laughs) And now I'm mad. I don't even want to be mad, but like, I know that you want me to be mad right now. I was like, why would you pick my my good mood? I know why, because my bad mood, he doesn't want me. He doesn't want me and Victoria to know that she, her blizzard was eaten. Right. Because yeah. me and Victoria is mean. Yeah. <laughs> so he wants happy Victoria that's a little like, oh. Yeah. Oh. You'd rather, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's good. It's a it's a solid play. I respect it. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like it's pretty we can we can take sad Victoria. You know. <laughs> oh, he's like yeah. I mean I Victoria might throw hands. You I never had know. To. <laughs> I had to. Yeah, she definitely throws words. I am. I'm like I'm. I'm more of like a. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed type of person, yeah. which is right. like oh, that cuts deep. Yeah. No. I and feel Chris like, is just like I feel like Chris is a nice enough person <laughs> that he'd be like, oh, I don't want you to be disappointed. Like. <laughs> He's like, oh, she's my aunt. Yeah. I just picture you two having a fight, like the Care Bears having a fight. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that because we're long. Yeah. The other day, I was just like, I'm mad now. Yeah. And then I walk in the kitchen, like clean one thing, and then I come back, and I was like, "Can I have a hug? <laughs> I don't want to be mad." <laughs> I'm not the type to like be mad. I, I can't go to bed mad. I don't know. I know some people are like, I used to date someone who like, he'd be like, "Give me like three days." He just gave me like this the like, cold, like cold, silent treatment for like days, and then be like, he then he would be over it. He'd be like, "All right, let's move on." And I'd be like, "Wait, but what?" Oh, it, I've just been like thinking that we were going to break up for three days. Yeah. <laughs> and like waiting to tell you something and so we can talk about it. He'd be like, no, I'm done with it. And I'm like, uh, I'm not. Manipulation so nice. is difficult. <laughs> 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 so then with Chris, yeah, we just like, we just get it over with. You just. Yeah, exactly. Can we well, talk I mean, about it? We don't it? really have a choice. We, yeah. I mean, we, we live, live together. In one bedroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you go no in the kitchen, it's just like the same room, but yeah. with a slight wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't even have a full wall between the <laughs> kitchen and living room. <laughs> yeah, it's not even a door. Mm. So, well, yeah. yeah. All right, so you went to my birthday. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> right, right, right. So you went to your birthday. Right. Hung out for a bit. Mm-hmm. Then we drove downtown and went to the Wild Rivers concert. Right. They were supposed to be here back in Feb, but then COVID, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They finally came back, and they're like a Canadian indie indie band from Ontario that cool. I love. They were so good. And That's they did cool. uh, Lumineers cover as one of their songs. Just oh, like, okay, because I saw on your story that there was like a Lumineers thing happening, and I was oh. like, I was oh, like, did you see a Lumineers? Wait, 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 wait hold on, hold on. <laughs> so just like, okay, so we went to Wild Rivers, they did a Lumineers cover during right, their song, right, during right, their set. Right. That was a great night. I'm trying to think of how we got home that night. Oh, we drove home. Never mind. Um, that's never oh, and then we sign. drove, we drove home, and then we went and walked and got blizzards that night. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Because we have a... A blizzard, uh, a blizzard shop. A, bl- a blizzard hut. <laughs> <laughs> blizzard hut. <laughs> a blizzard. Blizzards and more. <laughs> a blizzard dispensary. Yeah. <laughs> we went to our local Dairy Queen. It's yeah. the one on Broadway and Balsam? No. Trafalgar? 
something like that. Something like that is our favorite one. Mm -hmm. The staff there is wonderful. Like they just always seem to be in a good mood. Anyways, we got our blizzards. So we walked home. It was great. Then the next day we did. Well, that night we went to Bella St. Clair's show, who's one of our friends. She's great. Wait, Adrian that Clayson. night. Saturday night. Sa oh, Saturday night. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Friday. I we're still on Friday. Sorry. End of Friday. End so of Friday. Friday. We went home. Yeah. Went to bed late. Uh. I don't know what we did during Saturday during the day. Not much. Um, we we lived, we lived. Then we went to Bella St. Clair's show Saturday night. Mm -hmm. um, Adrian plays in her band. He's bass. And Adrian, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. I on think the Adrian is a. Uh, I think Adrian is like just sort of canon to the podcast at this yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna s s share something that he was like, don't 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 show photos of this. Oh no. So they did a cover of someone else. By Rez, oh, and Adrian okay. starts getting closer to the edge of the stage. Whoa, he moved. He moved. He, moved while he got the into the spotlight, and I was like, "Whoa, this is kind of weird." Then he stepped off the stage. What? And he performed his bass with the audience, and I was so happy for him. And he was smiling, and he was grooving, and I just, I can't believe he did it. And mm -hmm. I'm so proud of him. It was cool. That's whack. And he was like. Don't go showing this to other people, or other people are gonna expect things. He's like, he's like one of those guards outside Buckingham Palace. He's just <laughs> he like, is. he just is immovable. He is sturdy and reliable. Yeah. It's yeah. my lifelong goal to make Adrian laugh. Yeah, I meant I got him to laugh on stage one time, but fucking something up. When yeah. I was, oh, that's right. Yeah, he, he dropped your sticks or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. Oh man, that's I. I can't what, wait that for one the, time. Yeah, I can't wait for that footage. Uh, to 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 surface oh, Matt, of yeah. that of that what I was playing with uh with with Sam for Emmelyn yeah at uh, Portside Portside that was yeah. good and and, uh, and Sam does this thing near the end of the set where she's like like check like like showcases everybody in the band and gives them like a, a chance to like do a solo or whatever and she always gives Adrian and I a moment to do a, a little rhythm section thing and Adrian will just play the notes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I'll like, okay, I'll spice it up a bit. And I start playing, and I immediately drop my stick. <laughs> and then, like, go to reach into my stick bag, and it's, like, zipped up. And I'm like, Aww. hold on one sec. And I'm, like, trying, like, just playing with, like, my, my feet, and then, like, pulling out, like, one stick, and then pulled it out, like, on the beat. It was you did sick. it very well. I it, was watching the whole thing, yeah. and I was like, oh my god, oh was, my god. At the, oh at the god. time, I was like, this is the coolest way to look like a total fuck up you know because i'm doing it in like the class clowniest way and i felt it's such a, like it such a fool but it was pretty good but that yeah there was a there was a camera guy there and i really hope that that footage looks <laughs> as funny as it felt yeah it's always funny when someone calls out your name and gives you the spotlight and then something like and that then happens. you just and then you just trip yeah, <laughs> yeah. and fall on the ground and yeah. fart <laughs> you know <laughs> just like all at once that's how it felt <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, so we watched Bella. She was great. Yep. Yeah. Um, Adrian was great. Mm -hmm. Um, then we we wickedy walked. Uh, Adrian to his car. Mm -hmm. Kissed him goodbye as you do <laughs> to a good friend. You know. Mwah, mwah. No, not actually. <laughs> um, and then we went to our friend Sal's house, and Chris and Sal oh, made yeah, music that right. night. And I worked on an application. Which was like, I needed to be in that space, I think, to make, actually do the application. Yeah, you need to be in your creative space to do business. The question that I had to answer for this fucking... Um, sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this podcast. I mean, I've already been, do, been okay. swearing this whole time. Yeah. Okay. Well, Shit. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. The question was like, what makes you the next RBC emerging artist? And oh, like, I just was... I was going off. Usually I'm like, just like, I don't know, I'm a person that... And like and I was just I was like I, I have a voice that deserves to be heard and I was just like just going off. <laughs> it also said in a few a few sentences, so I had to like not give the essay of my I life. love I love banking and and I am an emerging artist. <laughs> I'm yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm right. I, I, I love RBC. <laughs> I love RBC. Actually all my credit cards and debit cards are under your bank. Yeah. So you should you're welcome. Um, I've had I, I always get really <laughs> nervous whenever I go to apply for something that RBC is funding because I've I've had a very spotty history with them <laughs> credit wise. And so I'm like I'm, like even if I nail it, 
and I and I win their their little contest or whatever, then there's probably they're probably gonna run some background check or try to get me to sign up for an account. and They're gonna see that it, you know how much money like, I like. You know them. that twenty thousand dollars you win, uh, give yeah. it back to us. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, it's like it's like oh shit, and then and then they're gonna like hold up a picture of like a of me without like a mustache and a beard, and it's gonna be like, hold on, that's oh. this guy. I know this guy. The, the yeah. And then, Montana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then, yeah, and then, it's, and then this whole house of cards I live in comes crashing down. <laughs> yeah. So that was Saturday. So yeah. then we did some music. Uh, I did some applications, and then the boys walked me home because um, Sal yeah. lives like five blocks from us. And I don't know, there was like Sal's your producer. Sal is one of our producers. Yeah, mm-hmm. Sal is one one half of Sound of Kalima who is a duo in Vancouver, Okay. who does like, I don't know, I would say like punk, r- they do everything. I don't know, I don't want to put them in a box. They make good music. Right. Um, so they're a duo, and then they're also a production duo as well. So Sal lives five blocks from us, it's fucking perfect, I hope he never moves. Um, <laughs> and it was like past midnight, and there's there's just been like reports and kits of like two men like randomly attacking women. So I was like, can you guys walk me home? Mm. And we needed the, they needed an ear break. Anyways, we call mm. them ear breaks. Yes. So yeah. we w- wiki walked home and um, and then they went and produced more. Nice. Which yeah. was nice. That's cool. Um, and then Sunday. What did we do on Sunday? Sunday I ditched you. And oh no! But what did you do in the big morning? Probably just woke up and watched TV like we always do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. We have a very oh, nice wait, wait. breakfast routine right now. Oh yeah, we'll tell you about our breakfast routine afterwards if you want. But, um, <laughs> um, well, we just made it seem like something else. And that sounds weird. Like, just, yeah, yeah I, was, I, I just actually, asked, I asked how your weekend was and it meant to, it was meant to just sort of be like an innocuous icebreaker. I'm so sorry. And it's been like 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. I'll just really wrap it up. Sunday, we did not a lot of things. Chris went and hung out with 12th son of Jacob, who's Ben. I just yeah, call ben. him his Instagram name and yeah. Isabel, yeah. Uh, yeah. and worked on some music. Yeah. And it's then, easier if we just call everybody by their Instagram handle <laughs> rather than, rather than their name. And then on the way back, uh, no, I was in the middle of that session, and I yeah. got a text from my friend, who yeah. was like, "Hey, do you want to see Lumineers tonight?" <laughs> I was like, "Holy shit! Like, okay, uh, I gotta go. Uh, like, yeah. like for free? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That for, was the big question. Like, for, uh, for free? For free? Uh, and he's like, "Yeah. Um, how many tickets you got?" He said, two, maybe four. I'm like, okay, what the heck? So I called Victoria, but she was like way too tired. And she was on the verge of not going. <laughs> I was really tired. Yeah, you weren't feeling it. Wait, you're not feeling it. You're not feeling it. <laughs> Chris I don't was know. Like, like, when you have the opportunity to do free shit, and it's cool free shit, then you gotta fucking do it. I was doing my best. I was mm-hmm. like, he was. Chris was like, did. have a nap, order some pizza, and have a nap, and I'll be home. Yeah. So yeah, I was in the middle of the session with them, which, they were awesome. I loved working with them. Yeah, um, no, they, they, they're a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, I was like... So uh, I just got offered this, and I'm gonna have to leave. So. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to excuse <laughs> myself. Sorry, guys. Yeah. yeah, but got everything done that I had to do, and then pieced it from Coquitlam. Yeah. Like holy shit, I always pieced forget, it from Coquitlam. I always forget how fucking far Coquitlam is. It's like a different country, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, yeah. pieced it from Coquitlam. Really got is. home. We had pizza that we had this morning as well, as well. for breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> leftover pizza. Watch you buy pizza. Hut. Yeah, and went. To the concert, we didn't know where the seats were. We get there. Uh, my buddy's like, meet us at this bar. We have uh, free drinks on my company because he works for Rogers. <laughs> he just and Rod- us each, Rogers like... is, uh, is really trying to people please right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so he bought us like... I don't know, Two drinks each. One of, the, one of the drinks was like 16 bucks. It was a margarita. <laughs> it was like, it was the tiniest margarita, but it was the strongest margarita I've ever had. Right. Potent. And then we walked down. And we're going to the 200 level, which, like, I'm like, that's the boxes. We were, and it's in a suite. Like, we're just like, holy shit, we have this whole suite. And, and they were playing at Rogers Arena? Yeah, yeah. We were in a fucking suite. Oh, neat. At the Luminaires. Yeah, it was, it was very bougie. It, I, it was the bougiest concert, and it was free. Like, yeah. we didn't, we just took drinks from the fridge after that. I've <laughs> only ever had, like, like a great experience whenever I've paid for concert tickets it's been a very mid experience mm. but whenever somebody's like free concert tickets it always elevates the experience well, because like, they've, got, free. they've got well, they've got they've got better <laughs> seats than me or there's yep. some other perk like yeah I, I I've yeah 
I got a friend that uh, that hooks me up with tickets every now and then. Nice. And yeah, like I I went to Jack White recently, and it wasn't like a sold out show because right. you know Jack White's in kind of his greatest hits era, so you know it's not like he's selling out. Pacific Coliseum, and I always hate going to Pacific Coliseum. So oh, I didn't, we just were there last night. Yeah, I didn't even buy, uh, I didn't even buy tickets because I was like, I hate like I saw Queens of the Stone Age at Queens of the Coliseum, oh. or Queens of the Coliseum <laughs> <laughs> at Pacific Coliseum, and uh, and it's like the sound is, it's like it's such a concrete building yeah. that it's like if you're not dead center. Uh, or like in GA, then you're just listening to the drums like slap back off the wall, and mm. it's like it's just horrible. Anyway, so yeah, I got free tickets to see Jack White, nice. and I was like dead center, like front row before GA, and it was just like the best sound I've ever had. Mm. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh wow, Pacific Coliseum's not that bad if you get like you know the <laughs> exact right guy. perfect seats. And then my friends that did pay for. Uh, tickets that were there were like up in like the nosebleeds and they're like yeah it was okay and I'm like I had a great time yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah so Lumineers was good Lumineers was great it was great yeah what they're able to do with just like a kick drum acoustic guitar and, and a dream voice, is it <laughs> in a dream yeah really yeah. Yeah. also but seriously there's so much he sings with so much soul and yeah. so much passion and just like yeah and the piano really player Oh, yeah. Enthusiasm, just ex he was running on the stage, just running barefoot. He was <laughs> jumping on the fucking piano, I jumping would... off. He jumped off the piano, and I was like, "Oh God!" And he, and he just, he, he, f he came off it and kind of like looked like he was gonna. Did I don't like know. A it, was just, it was amazing. <laughs> I, I would definitely would not expect anybody in Lumineers to be wearing shoes. Yeah. <laughs> They're great. Yeah, that kind of band. Yeah, yeah, they were great. Yeah, they, they have yeah. no shoes energy. <laughs> no shoe energy. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And then last night we saw the Billy, Billy, the Billy Talent. The Billy, <laughs> the, the Billy, Billy Talent, Talent experience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it was it was at the fucking um, Queens of the Pacific Coliseum. <laughs> Sick. Um, and oh, this is what was weird about that show. Um, so you like walk down, and at first we wanted to go down to the stage, right? And yeah. then they're like, oh, suddenly like it seemed like only certain people could go in, but it was just a flat rate for the tickets. Right. Because originally it was supposed to be at the Peony. Mm-hmm. But then it was moved to the Pacific Coliseum because it was rescheduled twice. Right. And so it turned out that only the first fifteen hundred people got the state, got the floor seats, oh. and you had to get a bracelet. And but they hadn't, they didn't announce that at all, and it right. wasn't on the tickets. So you only knew once you got there. Yeah. And the thing is, so then we ended up not being on the floor, which ended up being fine because um, it looked terrible. <laughs> it was extremely hot, and people were just. Little yeah. sausages packed oh, tightly. Um, sausages. But there was people where we were sitting, we had like side stage right, which ended up actually being fine. Yeah. Um, that had the wristbands on. Yeah. That were just chilling because they were just early birds. Like they're just right. like, oh, we want to go for both the openers. Yeah. And they had no intentions to go down there. Those are good friends. Those are good people. <laughs> Those are good people. The people that are like, yeah, let's go check out the opener. Yes. Yeah. I'm. I'm not one of those persons all the time. <laughs> yeah, we decided to have drinks at the warehouse instead. We decided to bond yeah. as a group before we went to the nice. show, right? Because we, we did um, we did this cool thing where oh, yeah. uh, we uh, I think made a like spreadsheet this. and we we each picked nine songs that we knew they were gonna play. Right, and we guessed, and then one like deep cut. Right, and. Uh, Victoria's friend Kaylee, who's a Billy Talent super fan, super fan, yeah. she got them all right. She wow, fucking killed it! Yeah. yeah, all of them right. Yeah, and she was like, "Oh, I actually have a playlist that I made like a few months ago with twenty three songs in it that I definitely think they're gonna play. This is gonna be so hard. I'm gonna have to weed down from twenty three to only 10. <laughs> I was like, "Girl, <laughs> that's uh, yeah." I was really happy you know, she, for her. She she had such a good time. Yeah. Um, yeah. the reason why she ended up, so uh, back in May, I was listening to Billy Talent like two days before they were. Supposed right. to be here, yeah, and just did an Insta story of me cleaning and listening to Billy Talent. Yeah, rage cleaning. Um, <laughs> I called it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what girls do. Um, and my friend was like, "Oh my god, they're coming to town. Yeah, tomorrow. I so wanted to go, but like no one wants to go." And I was like, "Oh, I'm going." Yeah. And she was like, "What? Re what?" And <laughs> and I was like, "Do you want to come?" And she was like, "I would love to come." Yeah. So she bought a ticket, and she was like, "I'm so excited." And then the next day, they're like, "We're can't we're, <laughs> we're postponing it." Oh. Yeah. And she was so sad. So seeing it was very interesting seeing your friend see a band they've always wanted to see and like just the joy right and the happiness of them getting to go like it was just was really nice like i don't i'm not actually a huge billy talent fan but it was like really cool to see her just like so happy and yeah. so like yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like i knew they were gonna play this song yeah like, 
Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Can tell, like, from the first note, like, oh, it's this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, like, usually I'm the music friend. Yeah. So seeing Kaylee as the music friend, being like, oh, I knew they were going to play this one, or, like, yeah. having all this info, I was like, this is so sick. Yeah. I love this. I love this for you. Yeah. Yes, and it's, it's, just, it's just funny, because it's, like, it's, like, it's Billy Talent at the end of the day, so you're always just, like, 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 oh yeah, I'm, I'm I'm so in love with this with this band, and then the dude on stage is like, <laughs> you know, you know like, what though? Yeah, him so being able to do that the whole time. Oh yeah. How does he still have a throat? That's what I was saying. I was it's, like, it's uh yeah. There's 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 dudes that make it their career to like uh, to to just yeah not hurt themselves while yeah. doing that. Like, he doesn't scream as much now. Yeah, I'm and, sure. Um, I'm sure there's uh, there's been some complications medically. Well, in, in one of the songs, they just had a sample playing for his scream. I oh, think. yeah, because yeah. he just like it's. Do uh, you know the song? This is how it goes. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. the chorus is all screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For that, they just like yeah. triggered a sample for it. Right. And then he did like a head he- head bang. And right. this, th- that's the thing that really makes me wish I had hair. Is like. When people you can get away with anything, bang, yeah, it like looks sick. Yeah, if I had bang, it just looks. I don't know. How you just l- look like, like you're shaking your head. <laughs> How long <laughs> have you not had hair? Oh, Ooh. Uh, a long time. Okay, but, like off and on. Right. So like I have alopecia. Okay. So when I was three, I lost like most of my hair, and my parents just like shaved my head. Right. Then a couple years later, it came back, mm-hmm. and then there was almost like a cycle of two or three years where it would come and go. Right. And Man, shaving your head, like having to shave your head as like a seven year old or like a nine year old, it was, it was tough, but it was even tougher for my parents because like I just have like a huge bald patch <laughs> or like a few big yeah. bald patches and they're like, we can't have this kid going on to the world right. like this. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> we gotta yeah. shave this, this kid bald. This is wrong. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was, it was fine for me because I was a kid and I just didn't give a shit. Right. But for the people around me, I think a lot of them were like, holy shit, does this kid have cancer? Like, <laughs> they're like, is, there, is your kid okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, why yeah. this? Yeah. I've, uh, yeah, I've had, I mean, yeah, like, I, I did have cancer. <laughs> so I was, right. uh, yeah, and so I was bald for, for that part of it. Mm-hmm. And that was just whatever. But then uh, I only just recently, like, started, like, going bald enough that I just started shaving my head just because I'm getting old. But the, <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, the, the. I, I before that like just before I started shaving my head I was like I could feel it happening mm, and I was no. just like I was like like just like it wasn't growing in growing back quite right and I'm like okay well I'm just gonna go one more last hurrah of like long hair and <laughs> yeah. so I didn't cut my hair for like two years yeah. and uh and I had like, like the so, yeah 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 so just like just shortly before I I met you two I had like shoulder length hair Damn. and I was oh. like yeah and I was like dyeing it all kinds of crazy colors and, it's so uh, weird. Like yeah. another another a- AJ out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, long haired yeah. AJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, and the, yeah, it, I didn't like clone myself, but yeah, <laughs> he's not still out he's there. In, he's I, in the closet. I killed him because <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. I had like bleached it, and I was like, there was a phase oh, where I was like, yeah, it's like, you know, my father will hear of this. I look like Draco Malfoy for a little while, mm. oh. and then um, but the. Uh, yeah, the, the but then I I overdid it. <laughs> I like I like over bleached it and oh, like no. overdid it. And one day I was in the shower and I just like pulled out a clump of hair. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well head banging days are over. And yeah. I was like, and then you know it's been gone since then. But it was uh Shit. yeah, but yeah, just because I have had the pleasure of you know head banging with long hair and yeah. it is uh yeah it's. It, it's a good feeling. It's because it's got counterweight to it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It just, it's not all neck, you know? You get some, you know, yeah. some momentum together. It feels great. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever had a ponytail before, but, like, sometimes you you turn your head a little too fast and you whip your eye with your ponytail. Mm. Like, hair has weight to it. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. good. <laughs> yeah, you got to be... It's, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> yeah. With great hair. Yeah. <laughs> great responsibility. Yeah. So now I'm I'm just a, a beardman now, but yeah, yeah. I have no responsibilities. I just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you're free. You're free. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> um, so after. after all that, you know, you guys make music, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we make music. Yeah. Um, together and separately. Yeah. Right. And separate and together. <laughs> 
Just like <laughs> blizzard consumption. Yeah, really though. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes um, we steal each other's songs. Like not each other's songs, but the chords of the song. You know, Chris is like making a song, and I'm like, oh, I got words already. Mm. Too bad, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, she's way it's better a- at coming up with words. Yeah. Yeah, and Chris is way better at making um, like beats and like harmonies and melodies and stuff. Mm-hmm. We were, we were, I was actually worried that like I wouldn't be able to talk during this actually. Because <laughs> Victoria is so good say. at coming I mean, up like, with words. That kind of helps a lot with the songwriting because you just splurge out onto a page and then, you know, it's there. <laughs> I'm usually good at like, also when Chris is having a hard time like being like I have this part and this part but like I don't have a middle or I don't know how to connect them mm-hmm. or like I'm I'm missing it this this section and I'm like okay just let me just play it yeah. And then yeah. I'll just like sit there and I'm like, oh. Yeah, we Ooh. compliment each other's, uh, yeah. not weaknesses, but gaps, I guess. Yeah. And that's yeah. just the beauty of collaboration. I and yeah, you just kind of got a uh, a full time collaborator, just kind of yeah. six feet away all the time. Yeah, it's 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 uh, really helpful. And like, I find like sometimes like I remember, Chris before didn't want to. Some people were like, do you want to collab with me? And mm-hmm. he was like, I don't know if I'll be able to, like, songwrite that fast, though. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I can help you. Mm-hmm. Like, that's okay. Right. Like, you don't have to have it all, like, or have to be put all the responsibility on yourself. Like, we right. can help each, out, each other out. Because, like, he helps me with, like, I, I'm not very good at harmonizing. I'm going to be honest. Like, grade 10 choir, I was like, I want to be the star. Right. Like, <laughs> I want to have the, the melody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and I really regret that now because bitch can't harmonize now because yeah. I was a selfish little bitch back yeah. in grade 10. I was like, I want to be the star. No, yeah. can't harmonize. But this guy can. And so I've been like slowly learning how to be slightly better at harmonies or be confident with them. Because right. I think sometimes I get it and then I'm like, no, 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 no. That was wrong. And Chris is like, no, you had it. Yeah. <laughs> you had just continued to sing. All right. So... I'm- it's really nice. Yeah. It's really great having someone that you can just be like, pop your head out of the bedroom and be like, I have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> I have a song idea. <laughs> yeah. Come listen. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The tough part is like, obviously a big part of like lyric writing or anything creative is sometimes you just need to be by yourself. Yeah. And <laughs> no, well, like sometimes she'll be playing something. She'll be like working on something and then I'll come home. Uh, and it's yeah. just like, oh, that it ruined. Yeah. It's, it's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like no. flow done. Uh, this session has ended. I feel and, so like, bad. Yeah. I feel like I'm the drama. Well, no, I I'll, the drama. I'll, I'll feel that way too. I just won't make a big deal out of it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never like, know. Okay, that's over. I'll I was I'll like, Chris, remind me about else. this, and then I'll get know. into a song, and then I'll be like there, and Chris will be like hovering, trying to be like, look, uh, she told me to remind her about this, but, but she's like writing, and oh, he's yeah. like <laughs> trying to like, he's like, uh, yeah, and, I, and I'll just be like this. I'll be like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me ten, ten more seconds, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am the beast of the house. Or if I'm, like. if it's tough to eat things because I'm apparently a loud chewer. Ah, uh, yeah. He's I have loud. never heard this from anybody else in my life. Yeah. But, they were all, but, they were all yeah, scared. If I'm eating, I don't think you can't do anything. It's just like, oh. it's kryptonite. Oh. I Lights. forgot my ambiance. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, but Chris, okay, you know how you slurped your coffee earlier and you said that was just for, like, effect? Comedic timing. Chris, like, just slurps his coffee. It's hot, he just, man. You know, so, it's... you know what he does? He, his coffee's hot, and he puts it in the microwave. He makes it burning, steaming hot, and then he's like... And he's like, well, it's too hot. I'm like, well, if you hadn't just put it in the fucking microwave! <laughs> you like know what sucks about that is he just reminded me that I'm out of coffee. And that bummed me up. That you you were out of coffee. I'm out of coffee, and now I'm kind of bummed out about it. Do you want to like message Ayla? She can come in for like a ad well, break. I'm not gonna message my girlfriend. Ayla. Can you make? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bring me the coffee. I'm in the middle yeah, of the podcast. You know, you know how much you know what she does for me already. You know. Yeah, I saw her bring you your yeah. breakfast. That was yeah. so sweet. I know, and now we're recording a podcast, and I feel weird about eating it. <laughs> yeah. Well, if if I keep talking, you can eat. Yeah, but it's gonna be like crunching noises in your microphone. ASMR. Yeah, uh, yeah, it'll be. I've, I've tried to get away with it before. It's not. I'm sorry. It takes too much, too much audio editing that I don't want to do. So. Right. Okay. I'd rather just, yeah. you know, be hungry. It's fine. That's fair. How do you yeah. usually do the podcast? Do you usually like? Do you ever take pauses during it? Or sometimes somebody's like, "I gotta pee right now," yeah. and then, uh, and then we, you know, right. take a break. But the yeah, right. I'm I'm currently thinking like, man, wouldn't it be cool if. Uh, enough people started watching this that uh we could get 
some sponsorships uh, from yeah. like local Vancouver businesses. Mm. Wouldn't that be neat? You That'd know? be really cool. Be like, brought to you by like Temple Coffee Roasters, you know, <laughs> or or Palette Coffee Roasters. Any really any local coffee company that would like to yeah. do- send some coffee brought and donuts my way. Coffee. Yeah. And brought- donuts. Yeah. Exactly. I would love to just have some Lucky's donuts, you know, like Oh yeah, they're in, nice. I'll put them in frame. I'll put I got I'll look at all this frame space I got right here. <laughs> you you know? put like a little hanger thing? Yeah. If we're filming in like the evening, it's yeah. like, you know, get get some beers or something. Ooh. I like that. Yeah. I'll come over. We'll keep beer. an eye out. Support local businesses. Yes. You know? Support our friends in the mm-hmm. cuz the 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 beer industry and the coffee industry and the indie music industry are like this, you know? They're like sisters. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're like they're like three sisters. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so sorry I had to. <laughs> you, you make my jokes weird in the best <laughs> way. <laughs> That's how we compliment each other. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you're uh, so y'all yeah. also play a shit ton of shows. Like between the two of you, I think I feel like I feel like you play a show like almost every weekend. <laughs> well, th- we're trying to like, or at well, least lately. I've just noticed the more I play live, the better I get, and the more confident I get, and the more I enjoy it, right. and the less anxious I am beforehand, which is just really nice. Yeah, and because you haven't been doing it that long. No, you I started haven't. like as a music project, <laughs> like se- like taking it seriously, like in during the pa- in the panini. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll tell you about my first my first session with Sal and Pete. Mm-hmm. Okay, I um was like October. No, I think it was September or October twenty twenty, mm-hmm. and I had met them a couple times before with Chris. He like brought me over. And so I got to know them. Sal had heard some of my music because I'm obnoxious and I'm like, look, listen, listen to this, listen to that. And finally, Sal was like, you should come over for your own session. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, and then I had like all these really shitty things happen in my life, including like tearing my ACL and my meniscus and I could not walk, like I was on crutches. And so our first session was the day after I tore my ACL and my meniscus. Um, I, Chris and I had been dating for... I don't know, like six months at that time. He didn't like, so he didn't live with me. I was living mm-hmm. by myself. So I'm like, I'm going to this session. I'm on crutches. It's pouring rain outside. I, the, sl- the, the tile outside my place is really bad with crutches. So I'm like trying to just like get out there. <laughs> then I'm like trying to find the Evo. I can't find the Evo. I'm like crutching in the rain. I'm like lost. I like cancel the Evo. Then it turns out to be right behind like a truck. And then I can't like rebook it because I, I booked it twice. So then I'm like, like under this awning like trying to call Evo and then it turns out I had to like find another Evo so I like crutched this other Evo anyways it was very <laughs> it just was so painful the I should drama. have just called someone to drive me or yeah. like taken a cab something yeah. there was so many other ways to get there yeah. but I made it there and I remember being like they're just like all right guys I'm here <laughs> like are you good <laughs> I'm like no, <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. But I really want to make music. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that was like, yeah, September, October, 2020, and since then, we've now I've now released five singles. Cool. Uh, I've performed a lot. I'd say like over, like ten to fifteen times. Right. So how was the how how did you get into performance? I guess Chris just kind of put you in touch with the right people and you just started making shows or yeah during the panini um or the pangeli or the pangea or whatever um during the pandemic um chris did some virtual shows with live acts right and during one of them i was like a special guest for like one or one song Mm -hmm. another time i did the whole set with him Mm -hmm. and during that set we mentioned that i was releasing a song Mm -hmm. kevin heard and it was just as live music was coming back, like, with the capacity. Right. And Kevin was like, oh, I heard that one of those songs is yours. Like, I really like your music. He's like, and so we talked, and he said, like, yeah, if you want a show, I'd be down to give you a shot. And nice. I was like, that's really cool. I would love that. Yeah. So then we started playing with, it was me, Chris, and then we met this guy named Ricardo. Ricardo played for us for a little bit as a percussion percussionist. Mm-hmm. And then Chris's friend John joined the band for just one show, but then he was like, I can't do more than one band. He mm-hmm. just, 
he he plays in Chris's band, and he just realized like I can't do more than one. Know your limit, play within it. But know. then I had a bass player, and I was like, well, now I need a bass player in my life, mm -hmm. and so but I don't know a lot of music people, mm -hmm. um, so I was like, who knows music people? I knew slightly of Andrew Lowe, who's like a fantastic keyboard player, yeah. wonderful guy. I, I, I DM'd him and was like, yo, I'm looking for a bass player. I know that you are like really in the Vancouver music scene. Do mm -hmm. you have any suggestions? Mm -hmm. He gave me three names. Mm -hmm. He gave me Adrian, Fitzpatrick, Jeremiah, Goen, and John So. And uh, I don't know, I can't, I'm not gonna say his last name because I'm gonna screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I just looked on their Instagrams and whoever had the most videos of them playing bass, yeah. <laughs> as who I DM first, yeah. <laughs> that was Adrian Fitzpatrick. Right. I know Adrian has been in my band since December of 2021. And then once you get into Adrian's world, you get like the spider web mm -hmm. of Really of though? Yeah, yeah. So true. Um, honestly though, like, um, and then from there now, like then I met you through Adrian, because we needed a drummer, mm -hmm. and it just like, man. That was a funny <laughs> situation. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, because like, yeah, so we, so Jack started to drum for us, but then Jack couldn't show up to any of the shows that yeah. I had yeah. booked. because Jack says yes to everything. <laughs> yeah. So then, Rod it was like, sh yeah. and then Jack injured his arm. Yeah. And I remember getting this text being like, okay, so, uh, it was from Adrian. Yeah. This like long text, and it was like, oh no, maybe, was it that? Adrian texted me on freaking um, Super Bowl. Sunday. Super Bowl. Hey, um, can we talk? Something like that. Something uh, that just blew my anxiety up. I right. already was like five drinks deep. Right. Getting a message to Adrian being like, "Can we talk?" And I was like, "Oh my god, he he doesn't like me. He doesn't want to be in my band anymore." Like just worst yeah. case scenario. Yeah. Call him. He's like, "So uh, Jack injured himself. He won't be able to play the gig." And I was like, oh, he's like, but don't worry. Jack already <laughs> found someone new. His name's AJ. He's in Toronto right now, um, but he'll be back in a few days. It's fine. It's all good, Victoria. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so then we met AJ, you. That is um, <laughs> this is AJ. Um, and in case you didn't know, this is his podcast. Um, <laughs> and you learned the set in like a week, I think. Yeah, you know. And I was like, and I was like, well, now we have a new friend who's yeah. also dope. And it's been fucking great, and I just, I love performing, and it's been so great. And I think this summer, like, basically our goal was to perform as much as we can, and even if no one fucking shows up to the shows, we're still gonna play a great show. Right. Like, we played a show at Osita, uh, and, like, one one song, no one clapped. Oh. Yeah, it was the one song that I wrote. <laughs> yeah. It was the one original, the Chris Clute original that no one clapped for. Uh, <laughs> and Chris was like... Yeah, that soul was kind of, that gig like that are kind of soul crushing, and I was like, why don't we like change our vocabulary to be character building? You know what? You know what's more soul crushing or character building or whatever is when you're playing in a cover band and people are just eating it up and just like they they're mm. like oh like they're having the best time, right? And you're just like, man, this Maroon Five song <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is. Like so much has so much more effect on these people than anything I've ever written, yeah. you know. And you're just like, I mean, you know, it start that 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 that's how I used to think anyway. Because right. like, I used to play like original band show, you know, to nobody, and then the next night play like a cover band show to like a corporate. Uh, oh yeah. You know, and you're just like. <sighs> I mean, we had an Elvis tribute between our two bands yeah. on, at the Salmon Festival. And I bet, I bet he killed it. And oh, he Elvis did. fucking killed he it. He slayed it, I bet. Huge crowd. Yeah, it's, and a, then it's they the year of Elvis. My yeah. band was going on. I was like, wait, stay. Yeah, stay. yeah. Come back. Come I, back. I play a few covers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, when people came to the stage, when I played those covers. Yeah. <sighs> Something about Shania Twain just being more viral than me. Let's go, girls. <laughs> I did that song. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done that song too. I've sang that song for people and been like, man, what does she have that I don't? And and once I figure that out, once we figure that out... We're going to be fucking stars. Yeah. That, you know, it's, that's what's coming. AJ Twain. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's... I mean, it's, and that's kind of... Part of it is just, you know, people don't really want to give things they don't know a, a chance, you yeah. know? And... Uh, cause it's like, you know, I've heard both your music. It's good music, you know? It's, Thank you. Yeah, it's, part, it's totally, totally There's fine some, music. Yeah. There's some yeah. nostalgia, though, when it comes oh. to a tribute band. I oh, think. absolutely. That's the thing, right? And, and, it's, and it's a lot of marketing is uh, figuring out what people know and then relating what you want them to know to what they know, right? Because it's like... That's true. It's like, think, there was one marketing course I took that kind of related everything to, like, friendships, where it's mm. like, if I wanted to be your friend, 
And I just walked up to you and said, let's be friends. You know, that'd be a bit weird, Mm -hmm. you know. Okay. It'd be a bit weird. Yeah. But not too bad. Um, If, uh, but if I wanted to be your friend and we had a mutual friend, Mm. you know, and then that mutual friend introduced us, then all of a sudden there's common ground. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Right. So that's why it's like, you know, as a band, you know, it's, if you can, if you can slay a cover, you know. And do it in your own yeah. style and, you know, layer everything in nicely. You know, that's why, you know, like 10 years ago, everybody was like, covers on YouTube, that's it. You yeah, know? no, true. That's, and, it was a thing. So yeah, and stuff like that. And now it's just like, you know, it's just about finding the mutual friend between, like, a lot of my Discover Weekly on Spotify, you know, I it, it's like, you, you get a good Talking Heads cover, you know, you're going to win me over, mm-hmm. you know, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to go creep your page and be like, okay, what else you got, you know? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's an, it's an intriguing issue to have to deal with, but, you know. I like that analogy though. That's awesome. Yeah, it's like yeah, okay, yeah. about friendship. Yeah. I was thinking about that too because these are songs like these cover songs that people have a long relationship with. Yeah. You know, and they trust and they, like, yeah. they grew up with it. Like yeah. at, at Billy Town, there's so many songs like that too. Where yeah. It's like holy shit. This, these songs are a part of like my childhood. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. So it takes you like, right back to being 14. Exactly. You know? yeah. And if you make that introduction with something that's kind of familiar that like touches somebody in that way, like it's a lot easier to make yeah. an introduction. You know, open the door a little bit to let in some of what, what you've mm-hmm. got. You're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. But that kind of gives me a little bit of hope with our original music and mm-hmm. that we just need to keep going because it's going to take time for people to, you know, establish that relationship with yeah. you and your music. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. and that's the the thing of it is you know we're in a very disposable society right now <laughs> yeah. you know where where things are like okay your song needs to blow up on TikTok and you need to get uh. instant success mm. right like that is the the <clears throat> mentality but then the reality is more just like it's just magnitudes of massive effort over a long period of time mm. you know and uh, and that's kind of the the balancing act, you know, sometimes it'll go one way, sometimes it'll go the other, but magnitudes of massive effort and looking at where you can improve, improve and, uh, and just working on it incrementally is like, that's how, you, that's how you do it, yeah. you know? I think you might have just wrote my next album for me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> no, those are good Wouldn't, words, though. Oh, good, good words are, uh, are part of the, part of the charm here. <laughs> Uh, yeah. cool. so what's, uh, what's coming up? You just put out a music video, Victoria. No. No. Single. Single? Do you have a music video coming out soon? Mm, maybe. Mm. Um, well, I think we have some footage that I think we're going to put together. Mm. Maybe a, a live a, thing. A live version of Moves Like the Devil. Ooh. So we dropped Moves Like the Devil on July 8th. Right. Um. Which sounds like a Billy Talent song. <laughs> yeah. the title. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> should have, I should have. Yeah, maybe Whoops. not. A little mash. Alternate version, maybe. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I put out a song called "Music like the Devil" on July eighth. It's like an indie pop rock song. Love it. Mm-hmm. It's great. Um, Chris actually, like the beginning of the beat and everything was Chris. Mm-hmm. We were like, we made. We we're at Sal's house mm-hmm. for a week of music. We made this other song called "Hold the Hope." That's like an acoustic soft song it's very like emotional and it's all about like um basically like sometimes you need to hold the hope for someone until they can believe it themselves Mm -hmm. so all like emotional then we took like an ear break Mm -hmm. we came back and chris was just like play a little stuff on the keys and we're like oh it's kind of cool oh it's kind of cool and then we made fucking moves like the devil out of that so we made like two songs in one night which were completely polar opposites of each other that's usually how that goes yeah (laughs) right because you make soft and now you're like yeah 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 um and I, I really like it. Uh, we're planning to probably put out a live version of it. I we performed it on July eighth at the Portside with Chris's band, mm-hmm. which was really cool. Um, <laughs> it was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really good show. Um, even though no one came, but it was a really good show. <laughs> I can like I actually like I left that show feeling very satisfied. Right. And very happy and very proud. And I feel like that doesn't happen with every one of my shows. I like left the stage smiling and being like we did a really good job. And I was like, that's a really good feeling, and I probably should do that more. Yeah. Mm. I probably should feel good about myself more. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after a show, right? Yeah. You just fucking, like, laid yourself on the stage and, mm-hmm. like, did something that not everyone else can do. Mm-hmm. 
And you did it well. Mm -hmm. And everything went right for the most part. Like, you should be really proud. And I was, yeah, yeah it was I good. I agree with that. I was very happy. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then you've got, uh, you've got, I think you've got two or three other unreleased in the process songs. Yeah. Um, probably going to drop a song in September, maybe. Right. That you've played before. The slow one. I actually really love how you play that, man. Yeah. Actually, all of Victoria's stuff. Yeah. I, uh, well, this will be a little stroke off sesh, but I, <laughs> I really love your drumming for her stuff, especially, and yeah. like the sounds and everything that you have going. It's fucking sweet. Mm -hmm. And it's like a, a, a gear, like, savant, I guess. Aficionado. <laughs> Aficionado. Yes. Yeah, it's the term I prefer. Our last, yeah. our last gig we played with AJ, I feel like every practice he added a new electronic pad. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the first practice was like one, there was none. And then like, then there was one, and then there was two, mm -hmm. and then there was three. And so when we did this show, we used like the pa the paper copy of the set of the thing. They're like, "Do you need a DI for the drums?" And we're like, "Oh, that's AJ." Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Oopsie. We're like, we don't need that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's the yeah, it's part of the the cool thing about being a drummer. You know, a lot of people just kind of sit down and go like, "I'm just gonna learn the beat and then play the beat." But I I try to like get into the point of the song mm -hmm. and figure out what the I don't know maybe it's just like my producer brain or maybe I'm just <laughs> like a you know cocky asshole and you know, put too much you know probably that put too much thought into it <laughs> but the uh uh but yeah I try to like I don't really listen like you're, you're supposed to listen to the bass and just like groove with the bass and whatever but I actually listen to the vocals more when I'm playing drums That's and I'll it. do like okay. shots like you know this is my this is my secret tip and now everybody's going to know like so that's how i know if i'm playing a song too fast if it sounds like the vocalist is uncomfortable you know that's when i start to pull it back and uh stuff like that yeah and uh yeah and then it was just like it felt like the point of these songs was like because a lot of the music is very you know you can tell it starts on just like an acoustic guitar and four chords and then needs to go somewhere else and uh and so it's like you can do the same thing with drums so i started sort of augmenting my kit with extra electronic sounds and stuff yeah. to kind of up change up the dynamic yeah, yeah sure. no it really helps with that song too because mm -hmm. it is slow mm -hmm. i always worry that it's too slow and it's too boring to play live mm -hmm. but i think we need to get over that because like there's always gonna be slow songs in a set or i'm not maybe not always uh, but like you're mm -hmm. allowed to like bring it down because yeah. like having dynamics in a show is also good because if yeah. you bring it down then when you bring it back up it makes a very big change. Yeah. Um, I re also really like that song. It just, um, it has like an R&B feel to it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I really like the phrasing and the songwriting in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, I wrote that song like really close to when I wrote Moves Like the Double too. Probably like within the same month, maybe. And they all, they both like have very similar themes in terms of they talk about rose colored glasses and like, right. um, kind of like, um, well, like, I, I'd say that a lot of times I think may, may, Maybe Yes, Maybe No goes before Moves Like the Devil because in Maybe Yes, Maybe No, someone is, like, um, living, or, like, it's basically about a partner who is very inconsistent and unreliable, mm -hmm. um, but, like, wanting to be loved, so you are able, you take, like, anything. You take, right. like, a speck of love because that's something rather right. than nothing. Mm -hmm. And then the bridge goes, like, um, like I put on shades, no more red flags. So you're like, you're like blissfully ignorant. You're yeah. like, I'm going to put on the shades and I'm just going to pretend everything's fine for a little bit. Cause that's easier than like being honest and knowing that this person doesn't actually like me as much as I like them. I really liked the, the lyrical implication as well of like, you can't see red flags when you're wearing like red cool. glasses. Right. Oh, right. I was like, yeah. I'm like, I duh. <laughs> yeah. Shades, yeah. No more red flags. Yeah. yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, it's a it, I a lot of your uh, you've got some 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 lyrical nuggets every now and then. <laughs> Thank that are, you. That uh, that are like that that those are my favorite kinds of things. Is just oh. like the little the the little twists. I'm trying to do more, yeah. I, I want more of that in my songwriting. And when I do, I it's really I really like it when people compliment it. Like it's actually really cool. Like when you messaged me and said, "Hey, um, could I help you produce like Ghost of a Girl?" I was mm -hmm. like, my heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone actually wants to do something with my music and I was like that's really fucking cool and yeah and that's only gonna keep happening the more you do that's it that's true yeah. yeah and and what about you Chris you got some stuff happening oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah 
Um, we actually just decided yesterday, and I haven't told you this. <gasps> but, um, Breaking news. Well, we just finally have a collection of songs that are going to fit on an EP. Ooh. Um, and we were just thinking about the themes yesterday, because, like, for some reason, I am super one-dimensional and talk about one thing in every single song. Mm -hmm. And I, well, like, I reference, like, phone calls a lot and, like, mm -hmm. just being on our phones, and I, now that I think about it, like, holy shit, I'm always on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of where it stems from, probably. But we're just finishing up the last couple songs on that EP right now. Yeah. And... Just kind of coming up with a plan of attack for releasing it and yeah. uh, building those relationships with people and yeah. trying to, you know, get actual people to listen to it, <laughs> not just, you know, my mom yeah. and the kids in my program that I work at. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which yeah. are fucking assholes sometimes, man. Kids. Yeah, they'll they'll like, cut you down. Oh, yeah. They have no, uh, yeah, that, yeah I'd, I'd be horrified. Haven't. To work this, with kids. This one girl who's nine years old in my program, obviously won't say the name. Right. Um, she's like, I mean, Candy's like my, I have a song called Candy. Right. Candy's my third favorite song of, of all, of all music. And I was like, holy shit, that's Ooh. cool. I was like, what's your second and first? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm reserving those I don't spots. Know, something better than yeah. your song. Yeah. I'm reserving those spots. Yeah. I yeah, actually, it, it, it's you're, pretty cool. I'm very excited for the EP. Like, I was excited for your album, obviously, but Chris like put on an album back in what February, yeah. March, right. that he'd been wanting to put out since we started seeing each other, mm -hmm. which was in 2020. Well, before mm -hmm. that, before that, so like he took a long time to finally drop that album, and it kept on just getting delayed for like, uh, yeah, for reasons. Yeah. Um, and finally, I was like, I think you need to just drop it. I think you just need to drop it because I think like you're being held back a little bit by that. Mm -hmm. but And, like, I love the album, but I'm also very excited about your new stuff, too. It's been yeah. very interesting. Well, it's also, like, you learn things from actually doing the thing. Yeah. Like, releasing is a whole different process from the writing and recording. recording yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, we learned some things. We're going to do some things a lot better on the next one. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Exciting. You sound like you sound like a, a a coach at like a sports interview. It's yeah. Like, yeah, we learned something, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, yeah. boys played hard out there, but yeah. you know, we gotta get more, <laughs> more pucks on that. Uh, yeah. Well, awesome. It's been it's been great hanging out, and uh, you know, I'm gonna get some more coffee. I think, and I, right. I know y'all have some places to be, but uh, yeah. it's been uh, it's been rad chatting with you, and Always. I'm looking forward to more of your stuff and playing more of your stuff. At some of your shows. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, man. Probably not all of them because you play a lot of shows. But <laughs> We have a lot of duo stuff coming up yeah. um, soon, but next time we have a band thing. You're a man. Or my man. I mean, one of our, my men. <laughs> I am a we also, man. <laughs> well, we also might be collabing on a show for yes. the near future. The near future. Little tease. Yeah. Oh, but, we'll um, see. Okay. But um, yeah, maybe. I don't think we'll. We're qualified to speak on that yet. No, yeah, <laughs> we don't. Have, yeah, yeah, we don't have the. Uh, we don't have all of our ducks in a in a row. Yeah, all of no our ducks. proverbial ducks. Yeah. Anyway, cool. Okay. This has been just an Aerodonis podcast. Have everybody have a a normal day. <laughs> Bye.